Hello and welcome back to Energy Scout News and Information. I'm Reb Byers. The third quarter of 2008 was a rough one for the oil market as crude oil futures plunged 28%. Now that's the biggest decline since 1991 and it was fueled by an advancing dollar and concern that a slowing economy will curtail global demand. Oil ranged from a high of $147 a barrel in July to a low of $90 in September. In other news, United States oil demand in July averaged 19 million barrels a day. That's the lowest for any month since May of 2003. It's also 1 million barrels a day lower than a year ago. Now, the EIA says the figures show a continued and accelerating drop in oil demand. Still, things may be improving somewhat. Crude oil rose for a second day after United States lawmakers said they intended to salvage a $700 billion bank rescue plan. United States stocks also jumped the most in six years. Both oil and the stock market plummeted earlier this week when the House voted down the initial bailout legislation. And still to come, a new name for Encana's oil sands and refinery operations. But first, let's take a look at today's new contracts. Precision Drilling will bore six wells for deep well oil and gas as part of the Sawn Lake Alberta oil sands development. iTech has snagged two five-year ROV contracts from Sea Dragon Offshore and Larson Oil and Gas. Worley Parsons has landed a $31 million contract from Devon Energy for the Jackfish 2 project in Canada's oil sands play. And Shell Oil Company President Marvin Odom is cautiously optimistic the drilling could take place off the Atlantic and Pacific coast. But he said major challenges still lie ahead that could prevent new production, including another congressional moratorium. He's very realistic about what this means, and he stated that it's an important signal that reflects a shift in public sentiment. On the pipeline front, TransCanada Corporation will begin an open season for its Alaska natural gas pipeline in early 2010. Vice President for Alaska Gas Development, Tony Palmer, said the company will conclude its open season by June 30th of that year. After that, the company will work towards certification by United States and Canadian regulatory agencies. And now for a quick review of today's People on the Move. Rosetta Resources has named Eleanor DeSanctis Executive Vice President of Strategy and Development. Alco Petroleum has announced a new board of directors. And finally, Pacific Asian Petroleum has named Heidi Wong as General Manager, Business Development, Government Relations, and Commercial Affairs. And weather continues to impact North American energy production. Flooding from heavy rains along Mexico's Gulf Coast have forced officials to keep oil wells shut in Veracruz. Now some areas are under 10 feet of water and 7,500 people have been evacuated. Pemex said five wells have been shut down, representing at least 1,500 barrels of crude oil per day. And what's in a name? Synovus Energy, that's what Encana Corporation has decided to call the oil sands and refining division it plans to spin off early next year. Now the name is a mashup of Century and the Latin word for new. Synovus will control the company's northern Alberta oil sands production and refining joint venture with ConocoPhillips. Turning to the alternative energy, a consortium of Lotus Works, Meridian Clean Fuels, and Shoshone Renaissance plans to build and operate $500 million worth of geothermal power plants in Utah near Salt Lake City. It will supply power to the city of Riverside in California when it reaches full operation in 2012. For more information on these stories and more, check out the news section on our site. And if you have any news from around the energy industry, you can email us at news at energyscout.com. As always, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.